Hi everyone, this is the second video for Cedar Intersection. I will carry on where we left off last time. We finished up to the pedestrian section, so now we are going to do the volumes and just a quick catch up. So, this is a simple four leg intersection signalized. It has two slip lanes, left turns, and this is a site in Australia uh, which I model. You can see the address, so it's uh, Loy Street and Loy Street and Tood, 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 Tood. Tood Yay Road. Okay. So, when you go to volumes, you have an option uh, to add vehicles on the left side or on the right side. They both do the same, just on the left it is more detailed or not more detailed just you can focus on one um, basically on one leg or one approach on the right you see everything so <laughs> let's add them you can change how do you want to add or what do you want to add you can add totals um, with a heavy vehicle split you can add separately the lights and heavies And you can add the totals and the heavy vehicle numbers. So it's basically just whatever you prefer or, or whatever you have in your um, surveys. So I just add some random numbers. So the right turns will be light. The straight movement, there is a bit more there. We will add some left turners. <laughs> so here, again, this is going to be maybe 20. This is 20, then we have like maybe 200 going straight, and the left turns 50s. A heavy vehicle split, I just put some random figures here. It's not important for our uh, test. <laughs> okay, uh, basically, that's it. So, here the unit time and peak flow period that depends on these um, the peak flow factor so that comes from HCM uh, you can read a bit about that there it basically what it does um, so in this case we are adding hourly volumes in 60 minutes it creates a profile a 30 minute peak within that and this 95% is basically uh, just what is on the shoulders and uh, the 30 minutes will be a little bit higher. So it will add a little bit of peakiness to it, a little bit of profile. When you go to manage and uh, change your region, it should update if you are America, in America to 92. And I think that this will become 15. So it will basically have a smaller but peak year uh, profile. Um, these growth rates are used when you do design life analysis. Um, you can basically run the model until it falls over. So you can just put like a future year and it will calculate the demand for each year based on the growth rate. So you don't need to calculate every single uh, year. Uh, you can just basically set a future year and do that, but we will have a look at that in a, in another video probably. But this is for that, this growth rate, and it can be given for each movement separately. Let's say you have a movement that is uh, that will grow much more, uh, more significantly than another one. Just do that or use these. Uh, flow scale, so it's just basically a constant um, multiplier. If you want to increase the flow, um, you can just maybe if you want to two times it, then uh, put 200 there or, or whatever you want to use. And that will, these two will um, be multiplied. So when you use a design life analysis or you do future year analysis, this flow scale will be considered in that one. So just be careful. It's probably useful when you just want to check some, when you do want to do some rough, quick 
test. Um, you can just use that instead of amending your original numbers and forgetting where you were. So probably that's a quick option there. Priorities. You need to select by this radio button. Um, and this will show if that movement gives way to anyone. This one doesn't. By default, it is this field. Or it is uh, done by Sidra. You can see that when you select and this right turn needs to give way, you can just tick or untick them. Uh, it is recommended to just quickly go through, you know, to see who gives way to who, just to make sure that you are happy with that. But by default, it usually does a good job. Gap acceptance. So this is something I wouldn't deal with or I wouldn't worry about a lot. Would only change them if you validate your model, and then you can you can basically demonstrate that you need to change them. You have some video footage, you have some queue data, delay uh, measurements, or whatever you have, and you just uh, your model doesn't produce those results, then it is a tool to use. These, especially if you want for separate vehicle classes, you can. Uh, do this. So there is not a lot to do there. <laughs> you can just use these, uh, the default here, uh, just update the speed if you have different ones. It is set to 60 km because um, by default, because usually in these roads it's 60, I think it's alright and it uh, should be 60 anyway, so I'm not going to change it. Yeah, it's 60. Uh, probably that is before the intersection as well. Yeah, so I'm not going to change these, uh, but you can update for the separately for each vehicle classes if you want. You can again, the same way you can select each. <laughs> Calibration, um, it is for separate vehicle classes. If you want to, or if you need to deal with these, Again, I don't think if you need to worry about this, uh, just leave them at default. Only deal with them if you have to. And for signals, there is just too much here to go through. I think that requires a separate video or something. But just a quick note on this one. So the lay start here, it is usually confused. So this lay start should not be used when uh, the pedestrian um, when you don't have a left green arrow or there is a, um, a red arrow to the left when there are pedestrians turning there. So it is not for that. This lay start should be used when you want to just provide a little bit of extra gap uh, for vehicles uh, to clear out the interstages or something. So that is, is, is mainly for that and not for pedestrian um, turns. And let's have a look at phase timing. So when I looked at the site, so it's a good tool or a tip that if you put the little man in the middle of the intersection, you see both signals. So you see that for those guys, the signal is green, but also for these guys, the signal is green. And the same goes to these ones. So when you are here, you can see that that is green. And also, if you just come, if you manage to find a place where you can see both lights, uh, somewhere, well, I managed to find, I managed to found it earlier. You can put somewhere down the little guy and it will show both on green so you can already show see that for example this car who made the photo uh, came out in a on a green so both is green so it's basically just a two phase alternating so when you go to sequences there are some basic setups i'm just going to select the two phase 
when you go to sequence editor you have the two phases here you can add or delete phase so you can i can delete this phase but i uh, also can add the phase and if you double click in it you can just set the and enter okay it, quite annoying when you hit enter it actually closes it but yeah you can do that uh, you can also clone a phase or move them left or right uh, so let's go back to one and it's all movement classes so what i do i just basically select all as you can see this is bright green because they don't give way this is purple because they are slips and the right turns give way so they are this dark green then i click on b and also here you can see phase a phase b and i just select all and as you can see automatically it updates so if i do that well, once i select it it changes to dark green because now it needs to give way okay so basically that's it then you can go to phase data um, this is something you don't need to deal with right now or to be fair let's not worry about these at this stage reference phase variable phase these are all so the reference phase when you have like a coordination um, variable phase can be skipped but let's uh, worry about these in another video maybe and here um, again so when you go back to sequence and the signal analysis method this changes how it is calculated this practical cycle time and again uh, let's worry about the other settings here on another video but let's just use the practical cycle time and the default um, acquisite setting here and here just at the maximum and the rounding so it will calculate basically the practical one and it will just round it to the nearest 10 um so that's fine and movement data here you can just do a lot of extra stuff and to fine tune it uh, you can have phase transitions radar or drop off so it, it can over complicate things uh, which we are not going to do now okay and basically that's it so all these two are for like the design live test sensitive test what i was talking about before but let's deal with these later let's have a look how you can get the results so wherever you are whichever this um, dialog box you have open you can always click process side but you can also click here on process side and you go to site reports and you can get like a movement summary i am not going to go into all the other outputs now uh, we will look at it in another video. I just wanted to go through and just do one intersection first to have a, an idea, like an overview. So what you see here is obviously a lot of things, a lot of columns. And um, here are your approaches. And within those, your uh, movements. So for each one, uh, like left turn through right turn left turn through right turn and so on then you had the, you have the input volumes the demand flows as you can see it's a little bit different because of your peak which are which we were talking about the peakiness then basically for every single one you have this degree saturation uh, volume over capacity then you have the average delay level of service 95 percent tieback of queues so just queue data um, vehicles and meters some more queue data and some speed but i think in this software what you are going to look at are the degree of saturation and you also have that data here in the bottom and also some notes how it is calculated and the level of service and you can quickly see that um, which movements are the criticals and um, for the whole approach you see 
an LOS and for the whole intersection you see the LOS. You can also see the cycle time here. The practical cycle time is 30 seconds. Obviously we don't really have a lot of vehicles, so just a few hundred and they just run and we don't have a lot of right turns either, so it, they can clear out quickly, so it's a quick alternating stuff. So I hope you found it useful. There will be more videos in this topic, uh, etc. And we will, I will try to go into the other details, uh, like you know, looking at uh, design life analysis, looking at all the other like site outputs, how to uh, have a look at the signal, <laughs> signalized intersection outputs, or the signal outputs phasing, how to understand what they mean, uh, and stuff like that. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.